In southeast Wyoming, the Laramie Mountains mark the division between the Great Plains and the Rockies. Rising to over 9,500 feet above sea level, the transition from prairie to mountains is subtle, except for the Sherman granite rock outcroppings which dominate the landscape. Three sets of steel rails twist and wind through this remarkable setting with a history dating back to the first transcontinental railroad. And for good reason, as this is Union Pacific's legendary route over Sherman Hill. Join 7 Idea Productions as we take you trackside from Cheyenne to Laramie. Known as the Laramie Sub, this busy portion of the overland route is witness to a nearly steady stream of rail traffic heading to destinations in both the eastern and western United States. We will begin in historic Cheyenne, Wyoming and head west as long, heavy trains snake their way over the highest point on the Transcontinental Railroad. Watch trains cross through deep cuts and fills, and pass through legendary Hermosa Tunnel. Witness monster manifests over two miles long tackling the grade. This is big time railroading in the Cowboy State as trains travel over Sherman Hill on Union Pacific's Laramie Subdivision. The Sherman grade lies in the Laramie Mountains in southeast Wyoming between Cheyenne and Laramie. The double track main line runs west of the state's capital city through Wicon, Bory, Granite, Buford, and crests the summit at Sherman. It then descends the west side through Dale Junction, Hermosa, Caloras, and Forel before arriving at Laramie. Main 3 was added in 1953 and though it is nine and a half miles longer, it offers easier grades and gentler curves. Also known as the Harriman Line, it heads west through Spear and the junction with UP's Greeley Sub, which runs south into Colorado, connecting Cheyenne with Denver. At West Spear, trains can take the Bory Cutoff and head west over Mains 1 and 2, or they can continue on Main 3 through MK, Lynch, Harriman, and Perkins. At Dale Junction, the line briefly goes back to double track through the Hermosa Tunnel, which is a summit of the grade for the Harriman Line. It then continues west through Red Buttes and terminates at the west end of Laramie. We will be taking a look at each of these routes over the grade as we travel east to west over Sherman Hill. Union Pacific Big Boy number 4004 is on static display at Holiday Park in Cheyenne. It is one of 25 big boy locomotives built to lug trains over the Wasatch Mountains between Ogden, Utah and Green River, Wyoming, as well as Sherman Hill in the 1940s and 50s. Measuring 132 feet 10 inches from coupler to coupler and weighing over 1.2 million pounds, the big boys were arguably the largest articulated steam locomotives ever built. The 4004 is one of eight surviving big boy locomotives and is an impressive sight to see when visiting Cheyenne. On July 23, 2013, Union Pacific made known their intentions of restoring big boy number 4014 to operating condition. At the time of this production, the 4014 is currently on display at the Rail Giants Train Museum in Pomona, California, where it has lived since 1962. In 2019, the 4014 returned to steam in time for Union Pacific's Spike 150 celebration at Ogden, Utah. But at the time these pictures were taken, a fully operational Union Pacific Big Boy was still the stuff of rail fan fantasy. Wyoming's capital city got its start in 1867 with the building of the Union Pacific Railroad. 
The first transcontinental mainline brought hopes of prosperity to the area, and the population grew rapidly. The Cheyenne Union Pacific Depot was completed in 1887 and is known as one of the most beautiful railroad stations in North America. Sandstone from a quarry near Fort Collins, Colorado was used for construction, giving the building its pink color. In 1929, the depot's interior was renovated into the popular Art Deco style of the era and looks just as magnificent today. A map on the floor shows the route over Sherman Hill we are about to explore. On the second floor, one can find a fantastic narrow gauge layout created by renowned modeler Harry S. Brunk of Clarkston, Nebraska. It is operated by a local model railroad club. This recent addition to the depot depicts the Colorado and Southern Railway's Clear Creek lines in Colorado. Stepping outside the depot, we get our first glance of Union Pacific's Cheyenne Yard. Only seven stalls remain of the original 48-stall roundhouse built in 1931. The turntable in the center is 126 feet in diameter. It was just big enough to accommodate the big boy. An impressive collection of vintage railroad equipment decorates the once busy facility, which is still home to the Union Pacific's steam program. The roundhouse, turntable, and machine shop were placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1992. They are located in the middle of the busy Cheyenne Yard, where cars are switched and mainline trains change crews. This is a division point and crew change point on Union Pacific's overland route, with the Sydney sub heading east into Nebraska and the Laramie sub heading west over Sherman Hill. Cheyenne Tower rises between the lanes of Central and Warren Avenue, which fly over the busy yard. A vintage snoot nose SD40-2 switches a long cut of auto rack cars near the west end of the yard. A super moon rises above the yard in the early hours of June 24, 2013. Our first train of the morning, UP 8477 West, departs Cheyenne for a run over Sherman Hill. Autorack train slips under the CNS Bridge, a crossing of the old Colorado and Southern, now BNSF's front range sub, running between Denver and Wendover, Wyoming. The Laramie sub departs Cheyenne as a four-track mainline, with mains one and two, the northernmost tracks, heading west toward Bory. Mains three and four take a more southerly route to Spear and the junction with UP's Greeley sub to Denver. On the west side of CNS Bridge, UP 7838 leads a work train out of Cheyenne on Main 3. We will catch up with this train a bit later at Spear, but first, let's follow Mains 1 and 2 to Laramie. East of Wicon, we are greeted by a flashing yellow on Main 2, as a local returns to Cheyenne after switching the nearby Dino Noble chemical plant. Another vintage EMD SD40-2 leads three tank cars and a buffer car down the 1% grade. This day marked the summer solstice and the hot afternoon sun was high in the sky over the plains of Wyoming.
West of Wycon, the grade stiffens to 1.5% until reaching the summit at Sherman. UP 8453 East leads a manifest downgrade toward Cheyenne on Main 1. Afternoon thunderstorms blotted out the sun, and the cool, fresh breeze blowing over the plains was thick with a smell of rain. Continuing west, we come to the Bori oil fields, where pup jacks go about the monotonous duty of sipping black gold from beneath the ground. Running through the scene is the Bori Cutoff, a connector track that ties Main 3 near Spear with Mains 1 and 2. The track can be seen to the left as UP 7956 East leads a double stack train through Bori on Main 1. Two remote-controlled DP units on the rear of the train race by in dynamics as the stack train heads to Cheyenne for a crew change. Bori is located at milepost 519.1 and appears on Union Pacific's timetable as CPW 519. UP 7835 West leads a morning Z train up Main 2. The lead Jivo and two SD-70Ms are digging in for the 1.5% climb up the east side of Sherman Hill. The track speed here is 55, but westbound trains rarely have enough power to make that speed.
relocating to auto, we catch a glimpse of a westbound manifest at MK on Main 3. As the train nears a large cut, an eastbound manifest led by UP 5305 approaches on Main 1. While the westbound continues up the third main line in the distance, the eastbound's mid-train DPUs pass our location. UP-4078 and SP-309 are buried 100 cars behind the lead engines to help this monster manifest over Sherman Hill. The sky is black over southeastern Wyoming as a large thunderstorm heads north out of Colorado, threatening the high plains with golf ball-sized hail and tornadoes. Fortunately, the massive storm headed east of our location and left Wyoming's capital city alone. The eerie stormlight of a new day silhouettes a wind farm west of Cheyenne as another weather disturbance moves through the area. In this semi-arid climate, the annual precipitation comes mostly from storms forming between May and August. As more clouds form overhead, UP 4073 East heads down grade on Main 1, just east of Granite. Moving up the grade, UP 7835 West is again seen, continuing its battle over Sherman Hill on Main 2 at Granite.
As the Z train passes Granite at milepost 528.5, we see the Granite Canyon Quarry in the distance. It supplies ballast for both Union Pacific and BNSF Railway, as well as rock for commercial projects in Wyoming and surrounding states. It is accessed by a 14,525-foot loop track and can load 2,400 tons of rock per hour. Moving to the west end of Granite, UP 4488 passes one of Sherman Hill's numerous snow fences as it rolls down grade on Main 1 in the late afternoon. Dark clouds return to the area, giving us some nice storm light as the eastbound manifest approaches granite. Before long, the clouds overtake the evening sun, bringing early darkness to the plains. On a different day, UP 7378 leads a string of hoppers down the grassy east slope of the Laramie Mountains between Buford and Granite. While driving I-80 over Sherman Hill, this sign might get your attention. The convenience store, gas station, and manufactured home located here is the closest populated place to the highest point on the first transcontinental railroad at Sherman. That sign you'll see in a minute. In the meantime, located just behind the nearly 10 acres of zip code 82052 is the UP station of Buford. This Buford has a population of one water tank, one maintenance of way crane, and for the moment, one eastbound Z train, which has just crested Sherman on the number one track.
Just east of the summit of Sherman Hill, trains snake through a series of S-curves to the top of the grade. UP 7956 begins its downhill run to Cheyenne after cresting Sherman Hill on a clear sunny morning. The grade at this point is an easy 0.8% on both sides of the summit. We have made it to the summit of Sherman Hill and the highest point on the first transcontinental railroad. The sign marks the top of the grade for mains 1 and 2 as UP 7778 leads another eastbound stack train through the reverse S-curve on the west side of summit.
As a train conquers the summit of Sherman Hill, we take a look at a nearby marker, a pyramid constructed on the grassy hillside. The Ames Monument was completed in 1882 by the Union Pacific in honor of Brothers Oaks and Oliver Ames, who were key to the construction of the Transcontinental Railroad. President Abraham Lincoln reportedly told Oaks Ames that if he could build the Transcontinental Railroad, he would be, quote, the most remembered man of the century, unquote. The 60-foot-high granite structure helps preserve that memory today, and it should be noted that the original summit of Sherman Hill was here at the north side of the monument, 232 feet higher than the current summit. 3 miles west of Summit is Dale. UP 8652 leads a high priority Super Z consisting of stacks and UPS trailers headed west on Main 1. As the train crawls toward the crossing, we see a second Z train led by UP 7835 on Main 2 and are treated to a double run by. The 7835 takes an early lead as it passes in front of us, but it will be held at Dale Junction to let the UPS trailers by. It then will follow the higher priority train through Hermosa Tunnel and down to Laramie. Dale Junction is where Main 3 joins the older grade and the railroad goes back to a double-track main through the Hermosa Tunnel. UP 5616 East climbs the hill on Main 1 with nearly two miles of train bound for North Platte, Nebraska. As the engines approach our location near milepost 543, the rear end of the train can be seen disappearing through a curve at milepost 545. Dale Junction is a busy place, as traffic from all three main lines must come through here. As the UP 5616 continues up the number one track, a westbound fresh produce train appears from the left on Main 3. 
This is the ZSKDL. The solid set of reefer cars originated on the CSX at Selkirk, New York, and is on a 3,300-mile journey bound for Delano, California. It carries fresh produce across the nation and is one of the highest priority trains on the UP. It has earned several nicknames by railroaders and rail fans alike, including the Super Fruit and Salad Shooter. The ZSKDL disappears into a large cut leading to the Hermosa Tunnel as the rear of the long North Platte Manifest train approaches our location. About two miles in the distance, we can see the head end as UP 5616 climbs to the summit of Sherman Hill. The Laramie Mountains form the eastern edge of the Rocky Mountains in Wyoming and Colorado. The Transcontinental Railroad crosses these mountains on an outlying ramp of the high plains called the Gangplank. Granite formations decorate the hillsides like a giant army of silent statues of all shapes and sizes. The Laramie subdivision cuts right through the middle of this amazing country. From a hill located in the middle of Dale Junction, we get a bird's eye view of an eastbound Z train as it rounds the curve at milepost 545 in the late afternoon. The train passes the Dale Rocks as it continues up the 0.8% grade on the number one track.
A wider view to the east shows us the third main line on the right, disappearing into Dale Cut in the distance. Main 3 is generally used for westbound movements and has a ruling grade of only 0.8% on the east side. The sun is getting lower in the western sky as a westbound Z train approaches with a short block of auto racks and stacks. The train rolls past the crossovers at Dale Junction and meets an eastbound manifest which has just exited Hermosa Tunnel on Main 1. The train continues uphill towards Sherman, and we dissolve to a ground level shot of an eastbound stack train. The sun has nearly set as UP 7459 East passes milepost 545 in the gathering dusk.
train rolls around the hill we were standing on earlier and continues past Dale Rocks in the last seconds of daylight. Moments later, UP4999 leads an eastbound empty auto rack train past control point CPW545 at Dale Junction. Night has come to Dale Junction, as another day of rail fanning comes to a close. The next day, we are set up near the east bore of Hermosa Tunnel, milepost 546.5. UP 7698 West has come up Main 3 and prepares to enter the 1,828-foot tunnel on the number 2 track. Hermosa Tunnel marks the summit of the grade for trains traveling over the third main line.
an EMD SD9043AC, lends its horsepower to the rear of the train. At the time of this production, several SD90s had been sidelined after cracks were discovered in their frames. A stack train exits the west bore of Hermosa Tunnel on track 2. UP-5298 leads an eastbound manifest up Main 1. Hermosa Tunnel is the only place between Cheyenne and Laramie where the railroad is reduced to double track. This can create a bottleneck during peak hours of the day, making this a likely spot to catch meats. While the eastbound continues up the hill, UP 4061 West appears out of the tunnel on Main 2. An afternoon Z train led by UP 8000 approaches on Main 1. The 8000 is one of 50 new ES 45 AC CTEs on the UP roster for 2013.
triple track begins again just west of the Hermosa Tunnel. In the late afternoon, UP 8740 West diverges onto the number 2 track at Hermosa. The lead SD70 Ace is in charge of a long manifest train with two DPUs cut in about 25 cars from the rear. The train has crested the top of the grade and the engineer now prepares for the descent to Laramie, around 18 miles away. Hermosa is a popular location to photograph trains and is easily accessed from a public road near the tiny hamlet of Tai Siding. The signal bridges near the west end provide a backdrop as a monster 141 car manifest train approaches on Main 1. Behind us, a westbound K-Line stack train appears on Main 3.
UP Jivo number 7987 brings up the rear of the train, providing dynamic braking for the 1.6% downhill run into the Laramie Valley. The stacker continues down Main 3, which separates from the other two tracks just around the curve. Around a minute later, the mid-train DPUs come into view. UP4078 and SP309, still with its original number, lend their muscle to this monster train over a mile behind the lead engines. The seemingly endless parade of cars continue to shuffle past the rural grade crossing at Hermosa. The 141-car manifest originated in Pocatello, Idaho, and is bound for UP's Bailey Yard in North Platte, Nebraska. Amongst the 588 axles are cars picked up as far away as Eugene, Oregon, UP's Albina Yard in Portland, Oregon, plus yards in Nampa and Pocatello, Idaho. During our visit to Sherman Hill in June of 2013, we witnessed more than one monster manifest train exceeding 13,000 feet in length. The longest was a westbound with 241 cars and measured a whopping 14,458 feet or 2.7 miles long. Unfortunately, that train came through in the night. As the UP 5305 East continues through Hermosa, we turn west following mains 1 and 2 into Laramie. Red rock formations abound along the west side of the Laramie Mountains at Caloras. The grade through this area was built during the construction of main 3 between Cheyenne and Dale Junction. The older route between Hermosa and Laramie was then reclassified as main 3. An eastbound Z train works its way through the beautiful scene near milepost 554 as it heads for Hermosa. The train meets a westbound manifest coming down Main 2.
Clouds are forming fast in the afternoon sky as we set up just outside of Laramie at station sign 4L, milepost 561.7. UP-8447 departs Laramie on Main 1, with stacks and auto racks headed east. The smokestack in the distance marks the old locomotive shops that once existed here. As the train continues east over Sherman Hill, let's head back towards Cheyenne and explore Main 3. At East Spear, UP 7838 leads a rail train onto the Greeley Sub for a trip south to Denver, Colorado. Mains 3 and 4 are visible behind the train. Spear is marked by a classic water tower which has stood since the steam days. UP 5366 heads west on Main 3, also known as the Harriman Line.
The train passes West Spear and the Bory Cutoff as it heads across the Wyoming Plains to Laramie. Another water tower remains at Harriman, the location of a 7,096-foot siding. UP 8661 West leads a manifest up the 0.8% grade in the midday sun. Roland Harriman, a UP board chairman in the 1950s and son of noted UP President E.H. Harriman, this was a location of a coaling tower where hard-working steam locomotives could get replenished before continuing on to Hermosa. The tower is gone, but the foundation remains to this day. Though nine and a half miles longer than the old route over Sherbin Hill, the number three track is the most scenic. To maintain a maximum grade of less than 1% on the east side, huge cuts and fills were made, exposing the pink earth and rock beneath the surface. One such cut is located near Perkins, a 6,476-foot siding. We are at the west end, near milepost C550.2. UP 4629 West leads a stack train into the cut as the afternoon clouds try to blot out the sun.
An impressive fill near mile marker C550.2 has been a favorite for photographers since the days when big boys roamed the earth. UP 5635 West takes its train over the fill between Perkins and Dale Junction. After crossing the fill, trains roll through a small cut at milepost C552. A pair of EMD SD70Ms take a string of flat cars through the cut. Three quarters of a mile to the west, we come to the most impressive cut on the line. Dale Cut grants the number three track access to mains one and two at Dale Junction. Through the cut, we can see a westbound stack train approaching the junction on the number two track. Before long, the sound of hard-working prime movers catches our attention as UP 5777 leads a heavy grain train across the fill and through Dale Cut.
A former Southern Pacific AC-4400 brings up the rear of the grain train as it rolls over the Harriman line. It's interesting to note that E.H. Harriman was also president of the Southern Pacific and had wanted both UP and SP to become one railroad. And they were between 1901 and 1913, when the U.S. Supreme Court ruled the companies be separated. Harriman's dream was again realized 83 years later, on September 11, 1996. UP 6875 West exits Dale Cut just before sunset. UP 7682 leads a heavy manifest out of Dale Cut in the late afternoon. Moving on to Hermosa, UP 7989 West takes a Z train toward Laramie on Main 3. Between Hermosa and Laramie, mileposts on the number 3 track are designated with a B. UP 5336 West heads down the 1.6% grade near milepost B552.
Just west of the siding at Red Buttes, UP-5617 races west with a loaded vehicle train at milepost B-558. In just a few minutes, the train will arrive at Laramie. Laramie is bathed in the evening's golden light as UP-8501 slowly approaches with a grain train. It will be stopping just below us to wait for a favorable signal over Sherman Hill. Looking to the south, or railroad east, we see the UP-6865 coming off the Harriman line with another grain train. As the DPU of the westbound train approaches, the UP-8501 gets a signal and departs east for an evening run over Sherman Hill.
soon the thunder of big diesel locomotives diminish and quiet again settles in around Laramie. Sometime after dark, if all goes well, the UP8501 will arrive in Cheyenne and the crew can tie up, having completed another successful run over Sherman Hill. We hope you've enjoyed your tour of this historic line and, like us, look forward to returning to this famous Union Pacific grade through the Laramie Mountains. Thanks for watching.